Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Wednesday, August, August 5th, uh, studentlawjustice.org live stream. My name is Alan Collins. I'm the founder of studentlawjustice.org. We have been around for 15 years, since 2000, March, actually, December 2005. No, sorry, March 2005. So more than 15 years now. Um, we are a completely grassroots group. For the first 15 years of our existence, uh, we were fighting very moderately for the return of bankruptcy protections to student loans. Uh, we've been featured on 60 Minutes in the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, on Fox News, on Vice News, in Rolling Stone multiple times, um, NPR, PBS, <clears throat> uh, Chinese Central Television, Al Jazeera, you name it, we've probably been on it. Um, we wrote the student loan scam in 2009 uh, with Beacon Press. So suffice it to say, we know a couple of things about the student loan problem. And to everybody who is new, I want to say welcome. We're very glad you found us. Where have you been? We are really, literally, the only true grassroots group um, out there legitimately fighting for student loan justice. Um, so as I said, for 15 years, we were fighting very moderately for the return of bankruptcy protections to student loans. We were credited uh, with being the reason that Hillary Clinton um, introduced the Student Loan Borrower Bill of Rights way back in the day in 2006. Um, our research was the <clears throat> um, spawning event for multiple uh, Senate uh, state attorney general investigations into Sally May, into the colleges, <clears throat> and etc. And I'm here to tell you folks that it's too late to return bankruptcy protections to student loans, really. I mean, if we were to reach and remember, the founding fathers called for uniform bankruptcy protections in the constitution. Like, look at article one, section eight, and you will see for yourself, the um, founding fathers call for the power to declare war, the power to raise an army, the power to coin currency, long list of powers. Above all those powers I just mentioned is the call for uniform bankruptcy laws. Well, this is exactly what's been taken away from student loans and only from student loans. So the heart of student loan injustice, indeed, is the removal of bankruptcy protections. But folks, I am here to tell you, if Congress were to finally get off their their duff and return bankruptcy protections to student loans, that would probably only succeed in ushering 15, 20, maybe even more, 25 million people into bankruptcy. I don't think we want to do that as a country. Folks, it is a failed lending system. If you forget everything I say tonight, remember at least that it is a failed lending system. And by the way, if you have any questions or comments as we go forward, please throw them up. Um, I'm very happy to respond to them in situ if I can see them. The new Facebook interface is a little strange, but we'll see. Um, if I can see them, I will definitely respond to them. Um, so yeah, folks, it's a failed lending system. Before the coronavirus crisis, 80% of all student loan borrowers, certainly all federal student loan borrowers, were never going to be able to repay their loans. 80%. That's four in five. If you know five people with student loans, four of them are freaking out about them. They will never be able to pay. Um, the loan cancellation pro uh, programs that are already in place are cruel jokes, and you and me are the punchline. The success rate for public service loan forgiveness is 0.8%. The success rate for the income-based repayment program, although the first loans haven't yet been forgiven, I would be stunned if it was more than 10, even maybe 5% because the Department of Education has no desire or intentions of canceling any loans. And by the way, we're seeing a lot of plans out there calling for loan cancellation from Joe Biden, from Elizabeth Warren, from Ariana Presley, uh, Bernie Sanders, and others. And I'm here to tell you that all of their loan cancellation plans are terminally ill. They're doomed to fail. Because not only will the Department of Education see to it that the bureaucracy behind it is so disgusting, almost nobody will make it through. The whole premise of all of those people's cancellation plans in the first place is that they have to pay for it. Well, the t I'm here to tell you, the taxpayers have already paid for these loans. 
85, the federal government owns 85% of all student loans directly, and they funded those loans many years ago. And by the way, they have made a lot of money and profit on those loans, certainly over the past 10 years. So it makes no sense to pass legislation that raises $1 trillion, $2 trillion in order to cancel loans. That's completely unneeded. Um, and by the way, that would add to the national debt and it would cost the taxpayers and all that sort of thing. The fact is the president, whether it's Donald Trump, Joe Biden, or Donald Duck, the president has the power to cancel certainly all federally owned student loans, which is 85% of all loans. And he could do it with nothing more than an executive order. He, no money would change hands. Um, we wouldn't need to raise one dime in taxes to pay for this loan cancellation. That's just nonsense. Uh, and perhaps more importantly, nothing would be added to the national debt. So we need stimulus right now. And remember, all that stuff I said about the 80% and, oh, by the way, the default rate for 2004 students is 40%. And those students were only borrowing a third of what is being borrowed today. So it's a failed lending system. And the only thing that makes sense right now to actually stimulate the economy in a very efficient way, meaning in a way that doesn't add to the national debt, doesn't require any additional taxes, is to do that executive order that I just described. So I am here to tell you that we started a petition. You may have found us through this petition calling on the president, currently President Trump, but maybe the next president, who knows, um, sooner rather than later would be better, obviously, to issue that ex executive order canceling all federally owned student loans. And, and this is not in the petition, but we are also, this is the second thing that we are fighting for. There's only two things we're fighting for. Second thing is the return of bankruptcy protections to the loans that remain. So our petition, this executive order, would cover all federal direct loans. In fact, it would cover all student loans that the federal government owns directly. And that's not always just the direct loans. Um, defaulted FFELP loans often go back to the Department of Education um, and a few others. But uh, So Perkins loans, unfortunately, would not qualify. Private loans would not qualify. Um, the older style FFELP loans that have not defaulted, and maybe they're sitting with a guarantor, maybe, maybe they have defaulted and they're sitting with a guarantor. But anyways, 15% of all student loans would not be covered by this executive order. That's why we need to pass these two pieces of legislation, S1414 and HR 2648. Those are two bills that are sitting in Congress right now. They could be passed tomorrow. Um, and by the way, if you happen to live in New York, I urge you very strongly to push Jerry Nadler very strongly to move that bill and get it up for a vote. It will pass, and I suspect a lot of Republicans at this point will probably vote for it. Um, the other bill, S-144 in this, oh, by the way, David Cicilline is also very key. Um, that bill is sitting in, in his subcommittee. David Cicilline is a congressional rep from um, Rhode Island. So, um, yeah, please do that. So two things, folks. Cancel all federal student loans. And, oh, by the way, do it in a way that the forgiven amount is not taxable, I should probably add. Um, and return bankruptcy protections to the student loans that remain. Those are the two things we're working on. And I'm thrilled to tell you all that as of, as of now, as of right now, we have something like 547,000 signatures on that petition. That's a really good thing. And it's by far our strongest petition to date. But you know, folks, there are 55 million people in the country right now. 44 with student loans or who are co-signed on them. 44 of those 55 million people are freaking out. They're in default. They're in forbearance. They're in deferment. Um, they're not able to make their payments. They're delinquent. Um, and that is a lot of voters. That's a lot of people. We could easily have 10, 15, 20, 25, even 30 million signatures on our petition. Um, so please, do everything that you can to make that happen. Like I said, if you know 10 people with student loans, eight of them are freaking out and they should be signing our petition at the minimum. So come on guys, make that happen. Um, so tonight, I wanna talk about Trump versus Biden. You know, we're about 93 or two days 
uh, away from the general election. And by the way, if you have any thoughts on that, feel free to to um, to let us know. Send a comment in. I'm happy to read it on the air and uh, respond to it in situ. Um, so, Trump versus Biden. Number one, both candidates, I would say, are basically pretty terrible uh, on the student loan issue, judging them from their past history. Going forward, eh, we'll see. But first, let's talk about Donald Trump. So he doesn't have much of a history with student loans. He does have a history with bankruptcy, though, and he knows, um, at least he should know, the constitutional importance of bankruptcy. Um, before Donald Trump ran for office, he was decrying the fact that the federal government was profiting on student loans. He said something to the effect of, you know, of all the places where the government shouldn't be making money, student loans would be it. That's just ridiculous. Um, so before he even announces, shortly before he ran, uh, announced his run for president, um, he said some very encouraging words. And his background with personal background, corporate background with bankruptcy really gave us a lot of hope for uh, President Trump. As president, so far, Donald Trump has been essentially a disaster. He's given the keys to the kingdom to um, Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos. She has been a disaster. She has picked um, appointed people to run her programs that by and large have been terrible. She's, she's, given, the, she's given the keys to the hen house to the fox. Um, you know, higher education lobbyists, for-profit college lobbyists have been given a run of the show. And, you know, I can just tell from all the stuff, all the speeches she's given and everything that she has said, um, that is swamp boilerplate that she is regurgitating. Um, you know, the one good thing that I can say that Donald Trump has done, and it's really pretty lame, but he did cancel the loans of 100% disabled, disabled veterans. So that was pretty good. But to be quite honest, this is something that every disabled person, every 100% disabled person, whether they're a veteran or not, can already do. They can fill out some very simple paperwork and their loans are canceled. But you have to have a 100% disability determination for that to happen, either from the VA or the Social Security Administration. So while Trump did that and he bounded his chest and said, look, I'm helping veterans, uh, it was really basically nonsensical. Uh, I'm seeing a call coming in, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pass because I'm doing a live stream with you. <laughs> um, so Donald Trump has been pretty terrible. Um, you know, he performed about as badly as I would have expected, quite frankly. Um, Frankly, I don't think student loans have been on uh, President Trump's radar very much at all uh, up to this point. Um, but yeah, he's been a disaster. Betsy DeVos has been a disaster. But again, folks, it's not the president nor their appointees like Betsy DeVos where the problem on this crisis really lies. It's the unelected, unappointed lifelong bureaucrats, lobbyists, and others in and around the Department of Education that are the problem. It's the swamp. The student loan swamp is the problem. Now, Donald Trump said that he was going to drain the swamp, right? Well, there is no better opportunity for him to do that than by issuing an executive order before the election, uh, acknowledging that this is a wholly, completely, totally failed lending system, pushing the reset button, <clears throat> canceling the loans, and coming up with a more fair, a better priced, a lower priced um, funding model for colleges. The colleges have made way too much money. They're charging way too high tuitions, and that's from Harvard all the way down to you know, truck driving and bartending academies. Um, across the board, the schools need to be put on a fairly significant diet. And if you don't agree with me, that's, I maybe respect your opinion, but if you've looked at the data, um, you will see that that is true. Um, you know, the colleges claim that the states have decreased their funding, uh, to the colleges, and that is a complete lie. That's an absolute myth. The states have increased their funding in real dollars to the colleges 
roughly on a par with inflation over the past years and decades and probably even longer. What the colleges are doing is they're pointing to their massively um, skyrocketing budgets where the state share of the budget has maybe shrunk because they're spending so much freaking money these days, and they're calling that a cut. Well, that's the most dis intellectually dishonest sleight of hand that you can imagine. And the colleges, including all the college presidents, should be ashamed of themselves for doing that. You know, most of the colleges have built up slush funds on the order of tens, hundreds, of millions or even many billion dollars over the past 13 years, starting in the last financial crisis. So the colleges need to be put in check, but more importantly, we the people, the 44 million people out there who will never be able to pay our loans, uh, and by the way, these are unconstitutionally predatory loans, I might add. Um, the 44 million people, they vote, they vote. And right now, I don't think many of them are married to one candidate or the other. So if Donald Trump knew what was good for him, he would do that. But really, if both candidates knew what they were doing, uh, knew what was good for them, they would do that. Um, so we'll see what happens with uh, President Trump. We've been um, connected with his people uh, for years now, and we are pushing as hard as we can, getting 10 or 15 or 20 million people on this petition in the next two months would really be what would tip the scales, folks. I kid you not. Um, so we shall see. We will keep pushing. And when I say we, I mean me and you. You. You sitting there right there. I can see you. You know, this is a grassroots movement, and nothing will happen unless you get off your ass and help us, pardon my French. But that is simply the fact. You need to own this problem. These are your loans. This is your livelihood. This is your future at stake here. Um, you know, it is a failed lending system, but it can have a good outcome and a bad outcome. The good outcome is what I just said. President Trump or the next president cancels the loans and starts over. But it can have a bad outcome where all of a sudden the federal government and its crony contractors and its pit viper collection companies start leaning people's properties, start suing them in uh, civil court, starts getting judgments against them, maybe even starts rolling federal marshals up to their homes and, and detaining them, taking them away in arrest with no-knock warrants. You know, that could happen. In fact, it has already begun to happen. Five years ago, um, people, they started, the federal marshals started arresting people from their homes with no-knock warrants in the Houston, Texas area. And the last I checked, they had plans to arrest like 1,500 people. Um, so, you know, as ridiculous as it may sound, you know, that's the sort of dystopian outcome that is not only a possibility, but it's already happening. We want to avoid that. <sighs> okay, end of sermon. So, Donald Trump, that's pretty much the skinny. If you have any questions or comments, put them out. Um, Joe Biden. Uh, um, Joe Biden was the worst candidate in the field on the student loan issue. Thankfully, when we were in Iowa during the pre the run up to the Iowa caucuses, we were able to convince um, both Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren to not only include the return of bankruptcy protections to student loans into their agendas, we were able to convince Elizabeth Warren to pledge that as president, she would return bankruptcy protections, certainly to all federal student loans, by executive order. Now, Joe Biden, to his credit, I suppose, and, and we're close with all the campaigns, including Joe Biden's campaign, um, Joe Biden has agreed uh, to adopt Elizabeth Warren's bankruptcy plan. And if you look at his website, lo and behold, you will see that they literally cut and paste her bankruptcy agenda as written uh, verbatim onto his website. Now, the problem is with Biden, um, he has not yet pledged to do the same executive order that Elizabeth Warren said that she would do. And that is the minimum threshold that must be met in order for us to endorse a candidate. Um, and let me, let me start over again. Um, so let's, let's start from the top. Joe Biden, like we did with Donald Trump, look at his past. 
Very important. Joe Biden, as Delaware senator, was instrumental in getting bankruptcy protections taken away, away from private student loans in 2005. Um, Delaware historically has been a state that is very beholden to the corporations and other lending institutions, other uh, big money institutions, be they investors or other banks or others. Uh, rumor has it that Joe Biden actually plays golf with Albert Lord, who's the former CEO chairman of Sally May, and he probably deserves more credit than any human being alive for this crisis that we now find ourselves in. Uh, he owns his own private luxury 18-hole golf course in Anne Arundel, Maryland, and rumor has it, I have not been able to um, prove yet, but I suspect it's true, that Joe Biden is... Uh, a fairly, or was certainly as vice president, a regular player on Albert Lord's golf course. I might also add that um, shortly after the changes to the Higher Education Act, that I, or sorry, um, the changes to the bankruptcy code in 2005 that I mentioned earlier, Joe Biden and Albert Lord did a very chummy, chummy press conference shoulder to shoulder on CNBC, where Sally May was announcing that it is, was moving its headquarters to Delaware. So... Joe Biden's got a very checkered past on this issue. In fact, it's not checkered. It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, and, you know, during the run-up to the campaign in Iowa, I spoke with Biden and even his granddaughter many uh, multiple times. Um, and Biden shut me down on the bankruptcy issue. And then I talked to his campaign manager. And then very shortly thereafter, they, um, uh, they came around and adopted uh, Elizabeth Warren's campaign pledge. So Joe Biden says he is for bankruptcy and it is on the website, but we, Joe Biden, we need more from him. We, we need him to do what he said he was going to do and truly adopt Elizabeth Warren's uh, bankruptcy plan. I want to hear it come out of his mouth, but more importantly, I want to see it come out in writing. That is the minimum that we would need to endorse uh, Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden has put forth a loan cancellation plan that is absolutely lame. It's like up to $10,000. Oh, and there's means testing. And oh, by the way, we have to pay for it, which is nonsense. And oh, by the way, the Department of Education is going to administer it, which means almost nobody will get it. Um, it's frankly an insult. It's insulting. Um, so Joe Biden would do very well. Um, and in fact, we would probably endorse him if he would say, yes, as president, I will issue an executive order not only for the return of bankruptcy protections to federal student loans, but I will issue an executive order canceling some or really what would be best, all federal student loans. That's what we need to see from Joe Biden in order to get uh, our endorsement. For Donald Trump... Um, well, it's roughly the same, but you know, Donald Trump is president right now. Donald Trump can cancel these loans right now before the election. So really, um, the time for talk is over with Donald Trump. He's got the power. He's got to actually cancel these loans. And if he does, he will get our glowing endorsement. Um, I would say combined with returning bankruptcy protections, to all of the loans that remain. So I will leave you, i make one final thought here. People, we are strong. You have no idea how strong we are. 55 million people in the country either have or are co-signed on student loans. 80% of them, 44 million people, will never be able to repay their loans. 44 million people, much less 55 million, that is enough to elect a president outright, almost. You know, that would turn a massive historic landslide into a solid victory, and vice versa. This is the electoral jackpot of the United States of America in this election right now. Every other issue you can point to, whether it's gun control or abortion or immigration or civil rights or Black Lives Matter or um, you name it, immigration, healthcare, 
the, the battle lines around those issues are pretty clear. But student loans is the Wild West. It's almost kind of a winner-take-all thing. Like my estimate, and I'm pretty good at estimating things over the years. I'm a former associate scientist of aeronautics at the California Institute of Technology. I have three degrees in engineering. Um, I live and breathe doing analysis and looking at numbers and doing research and so forth. My best estimate is that, first of all, the majority of those 44 million distressed student loan borrowers are independent. They don't, they're not strongly tied to one party or the other. Um, so if Trump were to cancel the loans tomorrow, I suspect that he would s realize a net gain of something like 20 to 25 million votes. And a lot of those votes would come from Biden. So that's more than a 25 uh, percent, uh, uh, 25 million increase because you're taken away from the other guy. So it's probably like a 30 million vote swing. That will de that will determine the election, absolutely, without question. Um, and, you know, similarly, if Joe Biden were to stop mouthing the words loan cancellation and putting up these nonsense, f sort of fake, um, never going to work cancellation plans, if he was actually to pledge, like with bankruptcy, that as president, he would cancel federal student loans um, and start over again, same thing. It is a massive voter bonanza. It is the key to the election. Um, so you, you, guys, you guys do not understand how much power that we hold over this election. That's why we are asking everybody right now to contact a news organization and tell them to report on this petition. You know, the media is talking about loan, student loan cancellation right now. They're not talking about this. Not so much. I mean, to our credit, we have been featured on Fox News Radio. We've been featured on Minneapolis uh, um, Progressive Radio a couple times, C-SPAN. And we've done quite a few interviews in other places, um, Coast to Coast uh, Radio Show. Um, but we certainly are not on the A-list right now. Well, you can make that happen. You know, if I call a reporter and say, hey, you should really interview me because da-da-da-da, it just it doesn't work that way. What works is a third-party introduction. So if you were to call 60 Minutes and say, hey, you really, and by the way, we've been on 60 Minutes, top story. Um, but they called us. We didn't call them. That's kind of the way it works. So if you were to call a news organization or a reporter or a producer that you know and say, hey, you should really interview this guy. He's, he's really onto something here. He's talking about student loan cancellation in a way that's never been discussed. He claims that um, the president could cancel all federal student loans, which is most of them, without needing any tax appropriation and without adding anything to the national debt, that would be, that right there is very persuasive and more, well, maybe not more than likely, but and it is a numbers game. You know, if you call a hundred reporters, maybe eight of them might be interested, um, but that would compel them as strongly as they can be compelled. And there's a good chance that they would wind up doing a story about it. So do that, folks. We are primed and ready to be doing interviews with any and all media. I will go on Rush Limbaugh. I will go on MSNBC with Rachel Maddow. I will talk to um, anywhere in between. We've done many of those shows. Um, we're good at it. Uh, we've been sharpening this sword for many years. But you have to make it happen. You've got to set them up so that we can knock them down. Give them our website. Give them my email, justice at studentloanjustice.org. Give them our phone number, area code 202-594-1120. Um, and make it happen. Make it your mission. Because, again, these are your loans. These are your problem. Do you want to be sitting here five years from now saying, wow, I should have really got off my ass five years ago and at least called a few reporters. Now I'm completely effed. Pardon the French. No. You don't want to be that guy. Neither do I. I've got student loans just like you. Um, we are a true citizens group, and that means that everyone in our group has equal weight, and that kind of includes me. I mean, depending on how you count it. Um, but do that. If you f remember only two things, 
Remember, number one, as I said at the top, it's a failed lending system. Number two, call a reporter or a news organization and help us get this story up on the front burner. <sighs> so I don't know what else to say, folks. I, I think I've said everything that I can say tonight. Um, see no questions or comments. I will leave it there at that. Got a little uh, longer than I wanted to tonight. But remember, folks, these are your loans, and this is your problem. And we can hang together, and we can have this problem solved by the election, which is like 92 or three days away. We can have this problem. We can have these loans gone by then if you step up. So let's hang together and let's get this problem gone while we have the chance, lest that bad thing happens and we all end up hanging separately. That's sort of a paraphrase from Benjamin Franklin. So think about that. Let it sink in. I hope that you choose the first thing. I hope that you join us. I hope that you help us fight. I hope that you get a news organization to report on our petition. Um, and I hope that we get 10 million people to sign our petition in the next week. Um, do that. And you'll feel a lot better about yourself and about this problem. And it will help you in every way. It's very cathartic and therapeutic. So hang in there. Godspeed. God bless you all. And uh, let's get this done. Peace.